doesn't seem like it's almost 20 years ago that the first four animals came to the sanctuary. And the full total of the animals that we cared for were nine. And now we care for just under 240. And that's the two of us. What's important to us is that we don't care for the rescued animals here at the expense of nature or the wildlife around us. Our belief is that everything should live in harmony, um, not at the detriment of, of any one of them. And so far it's been hard work, but very successful. We take animals from all different backgrounds. Some come from on the way to the slaughterhouse. Some come from farms where their future is very uncertain, where farmers are threatening to call out the hunt and have them shot, rather than pay out for the cost of some medicine to stop them suffering from whatever they're suffering from. People say to us, why do you do it? What's the point if you've only got 200 and something animals and there are millions that go through our slaughterhouses every, every year? And we, we know that it's a mere drop in the ocean, but to us, ourselves, we're not involved in, this, in the slaughter industry. We're living a life that is peaceful, harmless, and we feel is helping those that actually make it here. The way we live touches many types of people. It's not just vegetarians, animal rights, vegans. In fact, the reason that some of the animals are here, quite a few of them, is that a farmer who lives close by will actually drop off animals that don't sell at market and that will end up in the slaughterhouse, be them old or middle-aged, and often tiny calves will find their way to us. This is Grace. She's six and a half years old now, but when we first saw her, she was standing back to front in a tiny little calf pen. And when I asked the farmer who we were getting hay from why she was standing back to front, he said, just take her, she's trouble. And I said to him, what do you mean trouble? And he started to tell us the story of, of little Grace. As she was born in a dairy farm. She was the first calf to a very young mother. And what had happened was the farmer, a lady, wanted to separate Grace from her mother. And the mother put her head down to protect Grace from being taken from her. Um, the lady farmer then decided that she would declare Grace's mother dangerous and she got a shotgun and shot her in front of Grace. It traumatized the calf so much that she couldn't bear any human contact. And just as we reached out to touch her, she reared up on her back legs and climbed up the wall. We took her about two or three weeks later and it took us two and a half years for her to actually be relaxed enough for us to touch her and hold her. And Grace's story is just one of the many from the dairy industry that is, is deeply saddening. Reggie and Belladonna found their way to Wender and Matt when they were three days old and on their way to the slaughterhouse. Negotiations brought them to Hoglets instead. Denied colostrum at birth, both were very sick. The vets came every day and while Reg rallied, Belladonna was fading. A so-called spent Jersey cow, Suki, who arrived hours after the girls, jumped the gate into the calf pen and was producing milk so profusely there was enough for both calves. Little Belladonna died after weeks of being nursed and cared for day and night by Wenda and Matt, with both Suki and Reggie staying with her and grooming her. Reg and Suki then became inseparable, each filling the void in each other's lives. Clover, the other Jersey cow who had come off the slaughterhouse run with Suki, was heavily pregnant. She gave birth to Gromit when Reggie was two months old, and they very quickly became lifelong friends, doing everything together, playing, grazing, sleeping. Fifteen years later, Suki, the cow who adopted Reg as her own, and who had spent so long caring for her, was the first to leave Reggie and Gromit's little family group. She was 28 years old. Matthew and Wenda were with her, and other cows came into the barn, gathering around or grooming her. As she died, not one inch of her hair was left ungroomed. 
Clover then became mother to both Reg and Gromit, but desperately missed Suki. They had worked together in the dairy before coming to Huglitz. Gromit and Reg lay with Clover, ate with her, but before long she died and Gromit too became an orphan. That summer, Gromit and Reggie, now nearly 16 years old, were even more inseparable. But Wenda and Matt knew Gromit was still grieving for his mother. Six months after Clover's death, he suffered a horrific seizure. Reggie was at his side constantly, gently supporting him. After each seizure, she groomed his face before lying down next to him. The vets diagnosed a brain tumour. Conventional treatment was deemed hit and miss, so they opted to manage his condition with the help of their homeopathic vet. It allowed Gromit another three months of pain-free living, stopping the tumour getting larger and the seizures were infrequent. Gromit was left blind by his last seizure, and Reggie would lead him to water and to the hay feeder. They were inseparable. Wenda and Matt slept with him at night to be sure of being close if the need arose. On the day of Gromit's death, Reggie groomed Gromit's head one last time. She then went to lie down in the corner of the barn, and Reggie never stood up again. The loss of her lifelong companion quietly consumed her. For the next two months, Reggie hardly ate or drank. Wendra and Matt nursed and supported her around the clock. She received acupuncture, massage and tea touch. After a few months her appetite returned, but she did not get up, and lay down for a further 16 months until she too, very peacefully, died. Wenda writes, We sat together watching the most glorious sunset, cocooned in its beauty. Reg plonked her chin in my hands, and I stroked her silky muzzle absent-mindedly. She closed her eyes. I felt the touch of her breath on my skin. The sky turned from gold to red, the wispy clouds creating an intricate pattern of purple and grey. Reg had left us. In the blink of an eye, we were alone. This is Archie Newtail. He was born on a dairy farm in Windsor, and because they had used the same bull, as is often the case in many dairy farms, to impregnate the females year after year, he was born deformed. He's deaf. He's partially sighted, being blind in one eye. He's got fused hips, and obviously, as you can see, no tail. Uh, Archie was doomed because um, the government decided that he was well enough to be put in for slaughter. And we negotiated with deaf vets for quite a few weeks to release him, our point of view being that the case would probably be that he would be abused at the slaughterhouse for being different. Archie had a bad time at the farm he was on because he was deaf and he was partially sighted. He didn't understand what people wanted him to do. And we discovered once he was with us that he would stand in a corner with his head in the corner and try to make himself as invisible as possible. It took a long time for Archie to come out of his shell and we had help from a lot of people, including Vicky. And eventually he developed a full personality which, which we were very happy about. And despite the deaf vets, the government vets, saying that he would never be able to go out to graze, in 2012 he went out for the first time and he was able to run with the others and he still had no move. He was born, the vet said, without the ability to move. He would scream instead of mooing. And mid-year 2012, after lots and lots of practice, he moved for the very first time. And he was so joyful about the fact he had managed to move that he moved all that afternoon, all the evening, all the night, right into the next morning, and by breakfast time he was completely hoarse. Raymond, dear John, and little Eric are three calves who came to us in May 2014. They'd been at Ashford Market and hadn't sold. Um, they hadn't sold for fattening. So their fate was that they would be loaded onto the slaughter truck and taken off to be killed to make meat pies, to have their livers taken for calves' liver, 
and also to provide rennet, uh, which people use in the cheese industry. They came to us very late that night, um, having to, to take a ride with a, a truck full of sheep. And as we unloaded them at the gate, uh, little Eric's legs were so weak from fatigue and hunger that he had to be lifted into the back of our truck to be brought down into the barn. The three of them were incredibly ill, as is often the case, taken away from their mothers when they're tiny. And they developed pneumonia, and it was touch and go with little Eric as to whether he'd survive or not. Thankfully, they all pulled through, and we've given them lots of love and care, as we're, we're apt to do with youngsters that come our way. And now, six months later, they're all incredibly strong, very boisterous, very naughty, very mischievous, just as young bull calves should be. When they go out for the first time with the big ones, they'll actually look for the cows that are black and white. Because even though they've only seen them for an hour, maybe a day if they were lucky, then uh, they still have that memory of their mother. And they might be... 20 cows in the field and just two black and white ones and they'll go for the black and white ones. Yeah. And then they'll go for the black and white bullocks <laughs> just to see that they're not cows. Yeah. And what's the response of the... They, they know, you know, they know that they're not the mother. Yeah. Quand on a que l'amour à s'offrir en partage au jour Grand voyage Qu'est notre grand amour Quand on n'a que l'amour Mon amour, toi et moi Pour qu'éclate de joie Chaque heure et chaque jour Quand on n'a que l'amour Pour vivre nos promesses Sans nulle autre richesse Que d'y croire Toujours, quand on n'a que l'amour pour meubler de merveilles et couvrir de soleil la laideur des faubourgs, quand on n'a que l'amour pour unique raison, pour unique chanson et unique secours, quand on n'a que l'amour. Pour habiller matin, pauvres et malandrins, de manteaux de velours, quand on n'a que l'amour à offrir en prière pour les maux de la terre, en simple troubadour, quand on n'a que l'amour à offrir à cela dont l'unique combat est de chercher le jour quand on n'a que l'amour pour tracer un chemin et forcer le destin à chaque carrefour quand on n'a que l'amour pour parler au canon et rien qu'une chanson pour convaincre un tambour alors ça Rien que la force d'aimer Nous aurons dans nos mains Amis, le monde entier Fall in thy grave, then the part 